I must admit I was surprised that in 2001, the Pokemon hype was still going strong. As a kid, I'd seen many crazes come and go. Often the majority would last a matter of weeks, sometimes months at best. But in March 2001, Pokemon Stadium 2 was released as a follow-up to the smash hit first game. The problem was that Pokemon Stadium 1 had been an excellent game. It pulled off many tricks, secrets, and it did it with the slick polish you'd have expected for a game Nintendo went to town promoting. Following that game up just a year later didn't leave us with much hope that they were really going to add much into the game. Like the annual sports releases, it felt like Pokemon Stadium 2 existed not to further push the series forward, but to cash in while the franchise was still red hot. Remember, this was also the third Stadium game on the console, but only the second game released in the West. The game features all 251 Pokemon from the first and second generations, all with upgraded attack animations in the same 3D based battle screens. It also is compatible with the Pokemon Blue, Red, Yellow, Gold and Silver carts, so no matter which Game Boy cart you had lying around, you could connect it to the transfer pack once more and take your monsters from the small screen to the big. The strongest aspect of Pokemon Stadium 2 had to be its graphics. When you first turn on the game you'll be amazed at how crisp and sharp the menus are. It's almost surreal to see something as sharp as this on the N64 and it really adds to the overall polish of the game. This is all helped by the expansion pack support which bumps the resolution to a steady 640x480 without any slowdown. The disappointment was that the backgrounds when battling are still blurry at best. There is a visual bump over the first game and a little more variety. But when the character models look incredible, it's a shame that the backgrounds leave so much to be desired. There is however the same wealth of game modes found in the previous game too, with the option to enter quick battles, go to head to head with friends, or enter the Pokemon Cups. There's more depth for the single player tournaments this time around. Not only can you enter your own Pokemon across a huge number of Cups, but the Challenge Cup gives you random Pokemon to try and prove that you can master all different kinds of Pokemon. That's not to say it's for everyone though. The same fairly basic combat mechanics of the Game Boy games are carried over to the console release. There will be those of you who find yourself wishing for more depth and strategy when playing, and if this is you, then you will have lost interest well before you complete all of the tournaments. But for Pokemon fanatics, this should keep you gaming for months on end. Aside though from the battle arenas, the other areas of Pokemon Stadium 1 have been improved upon. The Pokemon Academy sees you either take classroom based classes to educate yourself on the Pokemon universe, but stay awake as you'll also have spot tests to check that you are picking up all the right information. Alternatively, you can head to the library to read textbooks for a less interactive experience. The mini games are also greatly expanded upon this time around too. They are new games to play and whilst they serve little more than a distraction from the main game, they are a welcome addition. If you have your Game Boy carts connected, you can also have the ability to play the carts on the big screen as you could in the first Pokemon game. Whilst there was a good amount of audio in the first Pokemon Stadium, there's even more in Pokemon Stadium 2. Using Factor 5's compression tools, you have a more expanded set of commentary lines, which was over the top and as enthusiastic as ever. Disappointing however though is the limited amount of background music in battles. Considering you spend the majority of your time in battle, the same few tracks are repeated far too often and they come become grating, especially in longer fights. It's really hard to come up with much about the game which I haven't already detailed in the review of the first game. Essentially Pokemon Stadium 2 does little to bring new players to the series, but if you liked and loved the first Pokemon Stadium games, then getting this game is a no-brainer due to its added cups and features. For everyone else though, you may feel shortchanged. Without an RPG mode to play in the game, like Pokemon Stadium 1, it feels more of an extension of the Pokemon universe than its own unique game. Now, that's not a bad thing, but without your own Pokemon which you have crafted, there's little connection between you and the monsters you rent in the game, and I'm quite sure the amount of time you spend with Pokemon Stadium 2 really will depend on your investment in your own Pokemon Game Boy games. So for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know what your favourite Pokemon game is from across any system and generation. I'm not a big Pokemon fan and so let me know where you think the best place to start playing the series is. As always let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and until next time.